Nachos Nachos, the story behind the world's favorite snack by Sandra Nickel and illustrated by Oliver Dominguez. In 1895, a baby boy was born in northern Mexico. His name was Ignacio Anaya, and like a lot of Ignacios, he was called Nacho for short. Nacho's parents died when he was young, and he went to live with a foster mother. He loved to sit in the kitchen while she made quesadillas. She warmed corn tortillas, folded cheese inside, and toasted them until they were golden on the outside and melted on the inside. Nacho ate up one quesadilla after another. Nacho learned about cooking from his foster mother. As he grew older, he became quite good at other tasks around the kitchen too. When Nacho turned 23, he found a job at a restaurant. He was willing to do whatever was needed, seat guests, pass out menus, take orders, and serve meals. As Nacho went from table to table, people smiled. He had a special talent for making diners happy. In the Mexican city of Piedras Negras, Rodolfo de los Santos heard about Nacho. Rodolfo was opening a new restaurant, the Victory Club, right across the Rio Grande River from Eagle Pass, Texas, in the United States. The Club Victoria, as the restaurant was called in Spanish, had its own orchestra, a moonlight patio for dancing, and four different menus featuring everything from steaks to seafood to Mexican specialties. Rodolfo wanted the best music, the best food, and the best people, and that included Nacho. The Victory Club's customers came from both Mexico and the United States. When they arrived, Nacho made sure everyone felt welcome. Nacho even knew how to please Mami Finan. Mami lived in Eagle Pass, but she was known on both sides of the border for her outstanding cooking. At home, she served guests jalapeno jelly, French crepes, and oyster soup. At the Victory Club, she wanted to try new dishes. One afternoon in 1940, during the Victory Club's quiet hours between lunch and dinner, Mommy walked in with three friends. Nacho, we're tired of the usual type snacks, Mommy said. Do you think you could whip us up something new, something different? Nacho smiled and headed for the kitchen. But Nacho had a problem. He didn't have any idea what to make. Even worse, there wasn't a single cook in the kitchen, and Rodolfo was nowhere to be seen. Nacho threw open the doors of the cupboards. He searched in the refrigerator. Finally, he spotted some freshly fried pieces of corn tortilla in a bowl and got an idea. Nacho carefully spread out the tortilla pieces on a platter. He sprinkled them with cheddar cheese and topped each piece of tortilla with a strip of pickled jalapeno pepper. As a last touch, he put the tortillas in the oven until they were golden and melted, just like his foster mother's quesadillas. Nacho rushed the hot platter out of the kitchen and placed it on the table. Mommy picked up a tortilla and took a bite. Hot, crispy tortilla. Melted cheddar cheese, a slice of jalapeno. So simple, so scrumptious, so spectacular. What do you call these snacks? Asked Mommy. Nacho grinned. Well, I guess we can just call them Nacho Special, he said. Mommy and her friends ordered another platter. And another. They ate until not a single bit of the crispy new snack was left. When the women finally left a couple of hours later, Nacho had already gone home. But on their way out of the Victory Club, the women came across friend after friend arriving for dinner. They told everyone to order the delicious new dish, Nacho's Special. As soon as Nacho arrived at work the next day, waiters crowded around him. They wanted to know what Nacho's Special was. Customers had been asking for it since the night before. Nacho headed straight into the kitchen and started cooking. Rodolfo watched his customers eat. Nacho made people smile when he served them as a waiter, but their smiles were even bigger when they ate Nacho's cooking. Rodolfo promoted Nacho to executive chef and put him in charge of making diners happy. He also added Nacho's new dish to every Victory Club menu. Year after year, word of Nacho's special spread. Restaurants all over Mexico and the United States began to serve the dish. Some added beans, some added guacamole, and some where along the way, restaurants started calling, calling the dish simply nachos. People still traveled to Piedras Negras. They wanted to eat nachos in the city where they were invented. Even a president of the United States and 
famous Mexican and American actors came to try the crunchy, cheesy, spicy snack. When the Victory Club closed in 1961, Nacho decided to open a restaurant of his own. He found a place in Piedras Negras, set up tables and chairs, wrote out his menu, and made sure to have plenty of tortillas, cheddar cheese, and jalapeno peppers on hand. Once everything was ready, he put up his sign in front of the door. He called his restaurant Nachos, and his most popular dish was, of course, Nachos Nachos. Afterward, Ignacio Anaya Garcia was born in San Carlos, Chihuahua, Mexico in 1895. He worked in restaurants in San Angelico, Texas, in the United States, and in Ciudad Asuña, Chihuahua, before moving to Piedras Negras, Cojilia. Nacho served his first platter of nachos special at the Victory Club in 1940. Many people came to Piedras Negras and tried the original nachos at Rodolfo's or Nacho's restaurant, including U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson, American actor John Wayne, and Mexican actors Cantin Vlas and Ricardo Montalban. Nacho's famous invention was so popular it spread around the world. Today, people can order nachos at all types of restaurants, sports stadiums, movie theaters, and snack bars everywhere from New York to Tokyo and beyond. Sometimes beans, guacamole, sour cream, beef, and or chicken are added. But the original nacho special, as invented by Nacho, consists only of fried tortilla pieces with melted cheddar cheese and strips of pickled jalapeno on top. Jalapenos were originally pickled whole or in strips, and only later in rounds, as they are commonly seen today. Mami Finan was born in 1887 in Hillsboro, Texas. When she was 16, she moved to Mexico with her parents. She was married there, ranched with her husband, and survived outlaws surrounding their home. After her husband died, she moved to Eagle Pass, Texas, right across the border from the Victory Club, and began settling insurance. Rodolfo de los Santos opened his first restaurant, El Moderno, when he was 22 years old. He used the money he earned to help support his mother, brothers, and sisters. Around 1939, he opened the Victory Club in Piedras Negras, where Nacho eventually worked for more than 20 years. Rodolfo was so grateful to Nacho for his many years of service, he gave Nacho kitchen equipment for his own new restaurant when the Victory Club closed. Over time, the word special was dropped from the name of the snack, as was the apostrophe in nachos. Most people around the world don't know that there was a real person, a man named Nacho, who created the popular dish. The city of Piedras Negras, however, never forgot. Every year around October 21st, when International Day of the Nacho is celebrated, Piedras Negras grows a three throws a three-day nacho fest with music, games, and best of all, lots and lots of nachos.